الله نزل أحسن الحديث كتابا متشابها كتابا متشابها مثانية قشعر منه جلود الذين يخشون ربهم ثم تلين جلودهم وقلوبهم إلى ذكر الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode of our series Understanding the Quran I am your host Yasir Qadi In today's episode we're going to discuss the concept of, of revelation the concept of inspiration How does a prophet get the Quran from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, before we go on to this episode, it goes without saying that we will never understand the full reality of prophethood. Rather, this is something that only the prophets know and can experience and understand. However, we do know certain things about this concept because our Prophet ﷺ has told us because the Qur'an itself makes these references. So, we need to summarize then today, what do we know about the concept of revelation or inspiration? In Arabic, we call it wahi. Realize that Wahi or inspiration that Allah sends to mankind is one of the greatest blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to mankind. That Allah communicates directly with us. And this is a belief that is shared by what is called the Abrahamic faiths, i.e. Judaism, Christianity and Islam. But it is not a belief that other religions have. Many religions deny that God sends prophets. They don't believe in something called prophets. But for us and especially for Muslims, we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and then He gave us all that we need, physically and spiritually. He provided us nourishment, food, water, drink, air, and He also told us how to live our lives. And telling us how to live our lives is done through the medium of the Prophets. Allah says in the Qur'an, when He sent Adam salam down to earth, Allah said, فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدَى Whenever guidance comes to you, then whoever follows this guidance, that person will not go astray, nor will he face any difficulties. So Allah clearly says, that guidances will come to you. Ya Bani Adama, imma yatiyannakum rusulum minkum yakusuna alikum ayati. O children of Adam, any time a prophet comes from me to you, O children of Adam, any time a prophet comes that is reciting to you my signs, then whoever believes and does good, then they shall be the ones who will achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah tells us the stories of so many prophets, Ibrahim and Ismail, Ishaq and Ya'qub, Isa and Ayyub, Yunus and Harun, Sulaiman and Dawood, all of these prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us their stories in the Quran. And of course, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is following along the very same line of prophets. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when the Quraysh were puzzled, what is this thing called a prophet? Allah says, أَكَانَ لِلنَّاسِ عَجَبًا أَنْ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ رَجُلٍ مِّنْهُمْ Is it something strange that we have sent a man who is inspired amongst them? So Allah says, inspiration is so common that it is something you should understand and accept. Inspiration has happened since the beginning of time. The very first man was also inspired by Allah and that was Adam alayhi salam. And our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the final Prophet who has been inspired by Allah. Now the meaning of, of wahi, the meaning of, of wahi in Arabic, the, which we have translated inspiration, is to communicate in a manner that others do not see. To communicate in a hidden manner. So you are communicating and other people around you do not see this communication. Therefore, wahi is called inspiration because the prophets get it and the people around them are not aware of it. Only these specific people amongst mankind get these wahi. How does wahi occur? Wahi occurs through a number of mediums, a number of ways. The primary verse that discusses how wahi occurs is verse number 51 of surah 42. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كَانَ لِبَشَرٍ أَنْ يُكَلِّمَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا وَحْيًا أَوْ مِنْ وَرَاءِ حِجَابٍ أَوْ يُرْسِلَ رَسُولًا فَيُوحِيَ بِإِذْنِهِ مَا يشاء. Allah mentions three things. It is not befitting, it is not possible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to a man except through inspiration or from behind a curtain or Allah sends a medium, i.e. an angel 
and that angel then inspires what we will. So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that wahi can be a number of types. And the scholars have subcategorized, Allah mentions three in this verse, and the scholars have subcategorized even more underneath this. So the first category is without an intermediary. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself reveals his message directly to the uh, prophets. And this can occur in one of two forms. The first form is that of dreams. And the dreams of all the prophets are a revelation from Allah. Any dream of a prophet is a true revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unlike our dreams, for us, dreams are one of three categories. One category is from our own souls. One category is from shaitan. And that's what we call nightmares, or we call them wet dreams as well. They come from shaitan. And the third category is a ru'ya as-saliha, or a good dream. And this is the dream that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the topic of clarifying dreams and the different types is actually another discussion. But this type of inspiration still remains in mankind to a lesser degree. And that's, that is why the Prophet ﷺ said, nothing is left of prophethood except good dreams. Nothing is left of prophethood except ar-ru'ya as-saliha. True dreams, an example of true dreams is the dream in which the Prophet ﷺ saw himself performing tawaf around the Kaaba, even though he was in Medina at the time. And there was a state of war between Mecca and Medina. And this dream came true, not that year, but the year after that. And this is known as the incident of Hudaybiyah. If you read the incident of Hudaybiyah, the Prophet ﷺ saw a dream and it came true. Likewise, before this incident, during the time of the Prophet Ibrahim السلام, the famous incident in which the Prophet Ibrahim السلام, dreamt of slaughtering and sacrificing his son and he knew that this was a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is only for the Prophets. Obviously, if one of us sees such a dream, it means absolutely nothing. We do not act upon such dreams. Unlike the Prophets, they are the ones who act upon these dreams. The second type of wahi that occurs is that which occurs with an intermediary. So the first is without an intermediary, and that is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very rarely speaks directly to the prophets from behind a curtain. And this has occurred to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa once on the night journey, and it occurred to Musa on the Mount of Sinai, Turi Sina, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa directly, but from, from, from behind a curtain. They did not see Allah. No creature has seen Allah in this world, in this life. Our bodies could not withstand that. This is a blessing that is given in the hereafter. So these are the two types of inspiration that occur without an intermediary. With an intermediary, this means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends an angel. And an angel comes and communicates with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the angel that Allah has chosen to do this communication is none other than the angel Jibreel alayhi salam. Allah says in the Quran, مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًّا لِجِبْرِيلَ فَإِنَّهُ نَزَّلَهُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Whoever shows animosity to Jibreel, let him know that Jibreel is the one who has revealed this book on your heart by the permission of Allah. Jibreel is the one who has come with this revelation. As Allah says in another verse, وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنذِرِينَ This is a revelation from the Lord of the worlds that the Holy Spirit, and when we Muslims say the Holy Spirit, we mean Jibreel. There is no element of divinity unlike the Christians. When they say the Holy Spirit, they mean one third of a God. And for us, there is no such thing as a trinity. The Holy Spirit means the angel Jibreel, and he is the angel. He is not God or a part of God. So Allah says the Holy Spirit brings it down to your heart so that you can be of those who are the prophets. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen the angel Jibreel to be the primary means of communication between him and and the prophets. And it is the same angel who has come to all of the prophets of Allah from Adam all the way down to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. In fact, it is the job of Jibreel to communicate with these prophets. Now, how did Jibreel get the Quran from Allah? Well, a hadith in Sahih Bukhari is quite explicit in this regard that Jibreel alayhi salam hears the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he hears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reciting the Qur'an, and he then comes down to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And it is also uh, narrated that Jibreel takes the Qur'an from what we call the preserved tablet, or the lawh al-mahfuz. And the lawh al-mahfuz is a 
prescribed tablet or a protected tablet upon which everything is written, including the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the Qur'an itself, that it has been preserved in the protected tablet. And we will talk about that in a future episode. So some scholars say that Jibreel also takes it from the Lawh al-Mahfuz and from the recitation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he hears it from Allah and he takes it from the Lawh al-Mahfuz. And this is the way that the Qur'an has been preserved to this day through recitation and through recording and writing down. Once Jibreel has received it, he then comes down to earth to give it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this occurs in one of two ways. How do we know this? Because Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that how does inspiration come to you? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, sometimes it comes to me like the ringing of a bell. I hear a loud noise. And sometimes the angel comes to me in the form of a man and he communicates like men communicate. I see him, but nobody else does. In other words, sometimes I hear a voice and I don't see any person, I don't see any angel. And the Prophet ﷺ said, that one is more difficult for me. And I hear a loud noise, and I know the angel is communicating with me. And he compared the noise to the ringing of a bell, not because of the sound, but rather to show that it is a very loud noise. And he said, it is difficult for me, it's more difficult for me. And the other one he said, is that the angel comes in the form of a man, and I understand what he has said. Now, when the wahi came down, it is narrated that the Prophet ﷺ, he would start sweating, even on a cold day. And it is narrated that he would lower his face and close his eyes. And it is narrated that if he was on a camel, for example, the camel would physically go down because it was so heavy. And if he was on, for example, Aisha's lap, Aisha would feel the weight of the Prophet ﷺ. So this shows that the revelation process was not a very easy one. It was a difficult process and the Prophet ﷺ bore it. And once the revelation left, once the angel left, the Prophet remembered what the angel had said and he would recite it to the companions. So the Prophet ﷺ received wahi from Jibreel and only from Jibreel. This is the only angel that communicated with the Prophet ﷺ with regards to the Qur'an. Other angels came down for other things, but the Qur'an only came through the angel Jibreel salam. So with this we come to a, the conclusion of today's episode. To summarize, Allah Azza wa Jal has always revealed books to all the prophets and these books have been revealed via the medium of Jibreel. Jibreel hears the, the, the revelation from Allah, comes down to our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and transfers the message to him in a way that we will never fully comprehend or grasp. With this we come to the conclusion of today's episode. We'll continue our discussion of the sciences of the Quran in our next episode. I hope to see you then. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah nazzala ahsan al hadith kitaban mutashabiha kitaban mutashabiha mathaniyata qashairu minhu juludu alladhina yakhshawna rabbahum ثُمَّ تَلِينُ جُلُودُهُمْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ